Yo, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video and this is my top 10 must own PC games. These 10 games are in my opinion the top 10 games that are essential to every PC gamer's library. This is a great list to go by if you're just getting into PC gaming and you want some great games to play. Now at the end of the day, I am only one person. I have played a lot of games on PC, but obviously no one person can play every game on PC. If you want to share your top 10 list in the comment section down below, feel free to do that. And also this list is in no particular order. These 10 games are are very diverse and I think a lot of these games are going to cater towards specific people. Regardless, I think these 10 games are games that every PC gamer should own. Without further ado, let's get into this with number 10, that's the Mass Effect series. Now yes, I know a lot of people were off put by Mass Effect 3's ending, but I still think Mass Effect as a trilogy is one of the best gaming trilogies of all time. Mass Effect 1 hasn't aged the best, but it's still definitely a great RPG. Mass Effect 2, in my opinion, is still one of the best role-playing games of all time. That game was near perfection. The gameplay was great. The story was amazing, the voice acting was outstanding, and even in 2015, I think Mass Effect 2 still looks great. Mass Effect 3 was also a great game, it did fumble a little on the story end of the game, but the gameplay was still great, and the character development was great as well in Mass Effect 3. I think Mass Effect is a great series to pick up on PC, it's a great RPG series, it's gonna provide you a lot of hours of entertainment, and at this point you can pick up the game super cheap, so I think Mass Effect is an essential game for all PC gamers, especially if you're an RPG fan. Number 9 is the Crisis series. Now just like Mass Effect, a lot of people were off put by Crisis 3, and I'm gonna actually be in that camp of people. Crisis 3, in my opinion, was not the best, but the first Crisis, Crisis Warhead, and Crisis 2, I thought were all outstanding. And Crisis has to be on a list like this because a lot of people boast about how great PC graphics are, and if you're boasting about great PC graphics, you gotta look at Crisis as the number one game to really set that pace of great PC visuals. The original Crisis was released back in 2007, and even in 2015, eight years later, Crisis is one of the best games you're gonna look at. Crisis 2 2 also looks fantastic, as does Crisis 3. There's also a lot of mods available to make Crisis and Crisis 2 look even better than they already do, and they're just stunning games to look at, but it's not just all graphics with Crisis. Crisis 1 is a fantastic first-person shooter that has more of an open environment. Crisis 2 and Crisis 3 follow a more linear approach, but still are pretty good games. My personal favorite out of the series was actually Crisis 2. I just thought that game was really well made. But if you're getting a new gaming PC, you gotta at least boot up Crisis 1, at least to see the gorgeous visuals, and honestly, Crisis is also a very very good first person shooter. Number 8 is The Walking Dead Season 1 and Season 2. I typically don't tear up or cry that often, but at the end of Walking Dead Season 1, I was near tears. The Walking Dead isn't a game with a lot of gameplay, but it has one of the best written stories I've ever seen in a video game. You just get so attached to the characters, and spoiler alert, yes, some of them die, and you feel pretty shitty after that happens, because for a lot of the characters, you actually get somewhat attached to them, and it's just an emotional roller coaster ride. I can't give out specifics of the story, because obviously I want to avoid spoilers. Spoilers, but trust me, if you're looking for a great story in a video game, you can't really do much better than The Walking Dead. It was a fantastically written story, and at this point, you can get Walking Dead Season 1 and Season 2 for really cheap. And like I said, while they don't have a ton of gameplay in them, the story was so well written that I think every gamer should really check out the game. Number 7, I grouped two games together. It's the Elder Scrolls series and the Fallout series. Now, both of these series are long-running franchises by Bethesda, and they are well-renowned as some of the best open-world games of all time. Obviously, we know that Fallout 4 is coming soon. Elder Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim is already out and on PC you guys just have to play the Bethesda open world game. Obviously you're getting a better frame rate, better graphics than the console version, but really the killer feature comes in the mods. And yes, with Fallout 4 on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 they will have mod support, probably not to the level of the PC version of the games, and the PC versions of the Bethesda open world games are just fantastic. Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim came out 4 years ago in 2011 and is still to this day one of the top played games on Steam. A big reason for that is mods, you're just getting endless content. You know, there is paid DLC for Skyrim, but a lot of people just keep downloading these mods and you honestly have unlimited content from weapons, quests, character mods. There's just so many different mods and it's so easily integrated with Steam Workshop or if you just want to go on Nexus mods. And honestly, if you're talking about a game, if you're stuck on an island and you could only pick one game, Skyrim would probably be it at this point. Just with the mods, you're going to get endless amount of content forever and there's so much stuff to do. It's just a great game and it's just amplified even more on PC. You guys have to play all of the Bethesda open world games when Fallout 4 releases, Skyrim is already out. They are just an absolute blast on PC. Number 6 is the Battlefield games. I myself prefer Battlefield 4. I actually did kind of enjoy Battlefield Hardline, believe it or not. But I think at this point, Battlefield 4 is the best game in the series. Battlefield 3 was actually one of the biggest games to get a lot of people to move over to PC gaming. And obviously, Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, all the Battlefield games have great visuals. And it's just a really fun multiplayer shooter. I do think a lot of fans did get turned off by Battlefield Hardline, but Battlefield 4 is still 
still a fantastic game. If you're looking for a multiplayer shooter with great visuals, you really can't do better than Battlefield. It's just one of those games you can always go back to, and a game you're gonna jump in and out all the time. And Battlefield is one of the biggest series on PC. I think whenever a new Battlefield game does come out, the entire PC gaming community looks at it, and the majority of them will end up playing it. So I think Battlefield 4 is definitely an essential first-person shooter to own on PC. Number five, some of you guys might be surprised by, but it is Rocket League. All the other games on this list are pretty serious, and games that you're gonna end up going pretty hard on. I wanted to add a game that was a fairly casual game. A game if a buddy comes over and they're not really a big gamer, you can just boot it up for them and they'll start enjoying the game. And I think Rocket League perfectly fits that description. It's just a very fun and casual soccer game with these race cars. And this was a game when a friend did come over, I showed him this game, and he wasn't a big gamer and he was just like, holy shit, this game looks awesome and he wanted to play it right away. In my opinion, Rocket League is just a great game that if you have five to ten minutes and you just want to play a quick match, you can do that. But if you do really want, playing Rocket League could end up turning into multiple hour sessions. It's just a ton of fun and one of those games that I think is a great party game. If you're looking to play more of a casual game with a couple friends, not take things too seriously, pop open a beer, something like that I think Rocket League is perfect for. You know, there's games like League of Legends where a lot of people go hard in, everybody gets frustrated in. Rocket League's a game you just chill back. It's a fun game. If you lose, you lose. If you win, you win. Nobody takes it that seriously, but it's definitely a ton of fun. Number four is Grand Theft Auto 5. To be honest, the entire Grand Theft Auto series is good. San Andreas is on PC and is fantastic. GTA 4, while it's definitely not the best GTA game of the series, the game's got a lot of mods on PC that make it a ton of fun, but really, in my opinion, the king of Grand Theft Auto has to be Grand Theft Auto 5. Yes, this game released back in September of 2013, and PC gamers had to wait something crazy like 19 months months to finally get it. But what can you say about Grand Theft Auto 5? It's just a blast. It was an excellent port, which is different from Grand Theft Auto 4. GTA 4 was actually a terrible port on PC. GTA 5 is just another one of those games that's got a lot of content. It's got an online mode, which is just going to increase the amount of content in the game. And GTA 5 is one of those games that you're just going to put endless amount of hours into. You can always go back to Grand Theft Auto and find something new to do, find something new to explore. And it's just another one of those games. While it doesn't have a lot of mods like Skyrim, it still offers endless amounts of content. And really, when you're talking about essential games, games for your game library, you can't look past Grand Theft Auto and GTA 5. Number three is a game series that I talk about all the time, and some of you guys get annoyed by how many times I talk about it, and that's The Witcher. The Witcher 1, The Witcher 2, obviously The Witcher 3, which is a fantastic game in 2015. Just a fantastic game series that originated on PC, actually. The only warning I have for those of you guys is that The Witcher 1 really hasn't aged that well. I try to go from time to time to replay the series, and honestly, I just cannot bring myself to play through The Witcher 1. The Witcher 2 is still fantastic, and during Steam sales, you can actually get The Witcher 2 for $3. And it's not like one of those $3 games that has no quality. Witcher 2 is all quality. Witcher 2 is actually tied for my favorite game of all time alongside Final Fantasy 7. But that's beside the point. Just know that Witcher 2 is a fantastic game, and everybody knows about The Witcher 3 at this point. Witcher 3 is just a fantastic open world game, and what I've said about The Witcher 3 is that it's the perfect single player experience. It's got a great story. It's got a giant world with a lot of content. It's got great graphics. It's got good gameplay. It's just everything you could want out of a single player game. And at this point, you can get The Witcher 1 for like $2. Like I said, The Witcher 2 on sale is like $3. The Witcher 3 is still a bit pricey since it is a new release, but you can get it for like $30. At the very least, play through The Witcher 2. Like I said, you can get it for so cheap that you really have no excuse not to pick it up. And if you like Witcher 2, which I'm sure you will, then check out Witcher 3. Number 2 is a game that keeps printing Valve a lot of money, and that's Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I don't go hard in CSGO, but I just see some of my friends go hard at it. I'll casually play Counter-Strike Global Offensive, but when it gets to the point of everybody screaming at their microphone and one player just missing a bullet, I'm like, all right, guys, you gotta chill out. But CSGO is definitely one of the best competitive games on PC. I have a friend that put like 1,600 hours into this game and has dropped like $500 on CSGO cases. Keep in mind, it is a very addictive game and it can drain your wallet dry if you get into the skins market. For me, I don't go too hard in Counter-Strike Global Offensive, but it's definitely a game you at least have to try out. The majority of my friends at least one point in their life have gone completely hard in this game playing eight hours a day crazy shit like that and they all enjoyed it for me i always played it casually i sucked ass at this game but without a shadow of a doubt counter-strike global offensive is a must-own title on pc it's a game that you can potentially put 2,000 hours into and obviously the ranking system it's just one of those games that almost personifies the pc it's honestly one of those games like league of legends dota that has really helped with the explosion of pc gaming and finally number one it's arma now arma is a pc exclusive that i really think encompasses everything about the culture of PC gaming. Obviously, the majority of you guys know about mods. I think the most popular mod was the DayZ mod for Arma 2. I remember when DayZ was originally released, everybody was going absolutely crazy about it. And just think, it originated as a mod.
not on Arma 2. Arma is just the PC gamer's kind of game. The controls, the graphics, the realism. I know a lot of you guys sleep on Arma single player. It's honestly pretty decent. But obviously when you talk about Arma, it's all about the multiplayer Arma 3 Wasteland and all the different game modes that Arma 3 has. Like I said, this is a PC gamer's kind of game. This is the kind of game you, you play with four or five buddies on the same server and you stay up until 4 a.m. just hunting people down or working together with other players. I just think Arma is the game, like I said, that encompasses the culture of PC gaming. In before someone says the culture of PC gaming is a bunch of fat people playing video games, but I digress. That's not where I'm trying to get at. Arma's got mods. It's the type of game you play for hours on end with friends. And it's just that multiplayer fun that I think a lot of PC gamers do look for. And it is definitely a must own title on PC. So that is my 10 must own and essential PC games. Let me know. Do you agree with this list? Comment below with your list down below. I'm interested to hear what you guys think. I know a lot of you guys have different tastes, but this was my personal list. And I really did try to make it diverse with a lot of different genres and a lot of different style of games. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you disliked it, obviously dislike. And as always, guys, have a great day. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.